Welcome to the Golf Spotlight. I'm Ralph Riven, and today we are talking about, well, how clubs have evolved over recent years and how the technology is benefiting golfers. And to do that, we're joined by Rob Stumpf with Club Champion. Rob, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now, as a master fitter, you are used to seeing all sorts of golfers with all sorts of swings coming in, trying to find the perfect clubs for them. And you've gotten a chance to see how the technology that's gone into the clubs in recent years is helping players become better golfers. Indeed, I have. Um, one of the big things that the drivers have changed, um, or the companies who designed the drivers have changed, has been their spin rates. Mm -hmm. So if you go back maybe five, six years ago, it would be very hard for me to have uh, optimal launch conditions with a driver in terms of height and spin for someone who wasn't coming into the ball optimally. That is a guy maybe who's hitting down on it. So one of the big things that's improved across the board is the ability for that ball to come off with better numbers, even with an imperfect swing. I just want to run through a couple of companies because sure. people have seen us talk about the technology innovations that they have, but maybe, you know, question, okay, how, how good are the results? And, you know, so when you look at a company like, for instance, Callaway, they've mm -hmm. introduced the recent line of Epic Clubs. How does that translate to what you've seen from Callaway in recent years? Uh, what they did, and they're not the only company to do it, but what they did is they implemented a lot more carbon in their design. Mm -hmm. So a few of the other manufacturers have in recent years moved a lot of weight forward and close to the face in an effort to reduce spin. Um, it definitely does do that, but the problem is the more weight you move to the front of the face, the more inherently less forgiving the driver becomes. Mm -hmm. What Callaway's done is they put a lot of carbon on the crown and in the middle of the club on the bottom, so they can concentrate a lot of weight forward, but also a lot of weight towards the back to help give it that stability. So it's really shown to be, for a number of our golfers, the best of both worlds. You talk about uh, Evolution Titleist used to be known for, you know, this is the way our Titleist club is designed, right. and now it can be customized to any swing. There's no question that the Titleist driver is probably the most fitter friendly in terms of being able to dial in uh, loft angle, lie angle, and then with the weight that they have in the back, affect the dispersion even more. So if someone's just flat out not hitting the ball where they're looking, the Titleist driver with their cog system and with the, uh, the biased weight allows me to help them hit the center line a lot more often. And a lot of people have been raving about uh, what you can do with the ping drivers as well. Ping drivers steady, Eddie. Um, they might not offer the full adjustability as far in loft and in lie that some of the other manufacturers do, but I kind of tell everyone the same thing is that with a ping driver, you almost have to whiff not to get a decent result. From toe to heel, if you get good contact or even halfway good contact, you'll get a good result. And when you talk about good results, you're getting a lot of a lot of people have seen that in recent years from Cobra as they've really evolved in, in the driver production that they've had. Significantly. I have never played a Cobra club before in my life, and I'm using a Cobra driver right now. Um, they were kind of playing second fiddle for a long time to Titleist, but with Puma owning Cobra right now, there's been a lot of uh, investment in their R&D department, and their product is really showing to be uh, comparable to that of the other manufacturers. And obviously a lot of people are interested in, in the clubs that come from TaylorMade with the M1 and M2 and now in their second generation, but really it's taken what's been in cycle for a number of years in TaylorMade's uh, driver development. Yeah, absolutely. The knock on the M series drivers specifically, but also the slider and the R series drivers the past few years is that they weren't as forgiving mm -hmm. as maybe some of the other models were, uh, their competitors that is. These new M series drivers uh, are having a lot more, or showing to have a lot more retention of ball speed on miss hits, which is exciting for us because most of the people that we deal with don't hit the center of the face every single time. Well, which gets to, I know you get a, this question all the time is, well, gee, what driver should I hit? And the answer, of course, is really what the computer says, because you run them through the mill and, and go through and find what's the best combination to fit their swing. That's exactly right. So what we're proud of here at Club Champion is we're not incented to push one brand over the other. And the reason why we set our, our business up that way is because we feel that all the manufacturers and all the heads have their merits. What you find is that different heads have different propensities to do different things for different golfers. So for the golfer that comes in that says, I will only look at this brand or I refuse to look at this brand, they're really limiting our ability to be able to help them play their best golf. Well, if people want more information about Club Champion, where the different locations are and what you do, where can they get that information? They can get it at clubchampiongolf.com. All right, Rob, thanks for the time. Thank you, too. I appreciate it. I want to thank Rob Stump for joining us here on the Golf Spotlight. Join us next time as we continue to give you the information that you need for your next golf purchase.